Hello, my name is Roland Reyer. I'm a technical specialist at Autodesk Media Entertainment in Europe. In this short video, I'd like to talk about two features of my print pack for Bifrost. The first feature is the Aim at Camera that I just recently built in. And the second one is two different methods of building a heads up display for your camera. I have set up a scene with a grid here and all of the points are labeled with their current position. You see that the position or the orientation of these labels is static, so they always point in the same direction, which makes them unreadable when you rotate the camera around them. So in order to aim these labels towards the camera, we need, of course, to have the camera or the camera matrix in the Bifrost graph. We can do this simply by creating a little locator and bring that matrix into the graph and then parent the locator to the camera. In my shelf for the manipulator field version 2, I have a function that creates such a matrix in the graph. So I don't need this node that splits up the matrix. I just need the matrix itself. And then I would plug this into the new camera plug in the transform section of the print points node. And then you see that all of these labels are immediately oriented towards this locator, which you can see when I move the locator around, they always turn towards the locator. And then in the outliner, I would middle mouse button drag and drop this locator onto the camera. The locator becomes invisible because the camera is set to be invisible. And then with the locator still selected, I simply zero out all of the position and orientation of the locator so that the locator sits exactly where the camera is. And now this is already done. You see all the labels are now oriented towards the camera. I made it so that when you transform the labels, for example, with an offset in X and a little bit in Y, so that the labels hover over their respective points, they rotate around this initial position so that it looks nice here. So that works fine and you know everything is good so far. The problem starts when this becomes slower. And one thing to make it slower or one way to make this slower is to increase the resolution on the actual polygon plane that we have here. So when I go into the channel box and increase the resolution to something like 100 by 100, of course, we have too many labels now for this thing here because it's restricted to 1000 anyway. So let's say make it 5000 labels. And then you see when I rotate the camera, it becomes really slow. We are, have less than two or less than three frames per second on my laptop here. And that is, of course, because in every frame, all of these labels need to be not redrawn, but at least reoriented towards the camera. That is done here in the Bifrost graph. That is not a function in Maya, that which would be very fast. This is done here in the Bifrost graph. And it happens, of course, you know, when you have too many points attached to this print points here. But imagine you would have something like 20 by 20 and something else in the graph is very slow because as soon as the camera triggers to refresh this one here, everything else in the graph would also be refreshed. So that would slow down the camera significantly. And that is the big disadvantage of this. Well, for the print points, there's no way around this. You have to live with that. You can at least, you know, with a point selection, you can filter the points. For example, use a dropout to, to just display every second or every third point, and then you see it becomes fast again. Or even use a field, like this spherical field here, uh, to filter out the points and to reduce the number of points that you actually see because you don't need to see 2000 points let's be honest you don't need to see so many points at once um, you can't read the labels anyway if if that is so small but for the other print commands there is a solution to that so let's have a look Here's an example of a simple setup with a print array function and the polygon plane that we display here is displayed or the positions of this polygon plane is displayed in the with a print array node, but just 100 values here. I've restricted that to be much faster. So this print array also has in the transform section now a camera plug and it also has a general transform plug to move this thing around. 
So we're gonna plug a locator into both of these. So this first one is just for the position. So now with this locator, I can move that thing around on the screen. And remember, you know, moving this around is always happening in the print array node. This is the thing that transforms the stuff on the screen. It's not Maya. So the second locator that I create, again, I don't need, I don't need the second node here, just need the plug for the matrix. I plug into the camera aim function and then I middle mouse button drag and drop this position locator onto the perspective camera and zero out its position and rotation again. And you see now my, my array is aimed towards the camera. It looks a little bit, you know, tilted like here on the side. And that comes from the fact that the rotation point is this one over here. So it rotates around this point here. We can stop that or, you know, fix this problem a little bit by translating this whole array with the local translate function, like with uh, X rotation, like so, and the Y rotation, like so. Now it's rotating around the center of the whole thing and the, you know, the whole tilting looks a little bit better. At least, you know, when I, when I flip the camera over so that it looks, you know, in <laughs> completely downwards, the whole aim thing would not flip. So that's, that's uh, at least a function. But remember, this is all done. So the camera is now part of the Bifrost graph and it will become slow if you have anything slow in your, uh, in your graph that needs to be updated together with this print array function. But there's also a fix for that. So let me load another scene or let me load the same scene again to show you the fix. So for the fix of this problem that the camera becomes a part of the Bifrost graph, we actually don't need this transform here at all. So we can collapse this section we can, because we're not going to use this functionality here. It is convenient because normally when you look in the outliner, the whole Bifrost graph, this polygon plane here that is deformed and also the print and everything else is just one node in the outliner. And there is a function in the Bifrost graph editor to convert this to another method. So we can convert the Bifrost graph shape to a so-called Bifrost board where all the objects, so whatever you create is a separate object. Now with these separate objects, I can of course do some things. For example, use this Biff object here, which is obviously the, the whole text that's spit out by print array. And when I transform it, this is done by Maya. And this is way, way faster than to recalculate all of the positions of all of these trends in the print array node. So Maya has a dedicated function to do this extremely fast. And also, you know, orienting that thing is now much easier by simply picking the perspective camera as an, as an aim object here, and then my Biff object, and simply go to the constraint menu and choose the aim constraint. So now the aim constraint is not set properly, so let's open the attribute editor, select the aim, and then say we want the aim not to be the x-axis, we want it to be the z-axis. So now the thing is aiming properly at my camera. So you see here it works. It's looking towards the camera. The problem is that it flips around, you know, when I turn the camera over the y-axis, then it flips around. But that can be easily fixed by saying here in the attribute editor, instead of a, you know, just a vector, the y-axis, we use a object rotation up axis from the perspective camera. And as soon as I do that, close this, make some space here. As soon as I do that, you see that I can, you know, flip the camera over and the text or this print array will always stay upright and always look nice. So this is the preferred method because this way the camera does not become part of the Bifrost graph. It will not trigger an update when you move, just move the camera and the camera will always be fast and the text is always looking towards the camera. Another way to display this stuff always uh, in the camera is to simply make a head-up display. Let me show you an example for that. 
as a head-up display, I made myself a bunch of functions that simply collect some information about this object here. So in this case, my polygon plane, when I move it around, you see that it collects the bounding box size. And when I change the size of the or the resolution of this polygon plane, you see that it changes the poly point count, the face count, and so on. So some information about the object, I could even collapse all of this into a custom node and use that whenever I need information about an object. What's with this thing now? So again, we have just one Bifrost shape node, Bifrost graph shape node. If I want to move this separately, this, this object here separately, I would have to create a, a locator again. And let me, let me try to do that. So let's create the locator here like before and plug in the matrix into the transform function and simply parent this transform to the perspective and then zero out all of the transforms. So in order to make it visible, we have to move it a little bit away from the camera again. And that is along the Z axis in the negative direction. So we have to go minus one, for example, um, so here's the locator, or at least we see the manipulator for the locator. The locator itself is hidden because the camera is hidden. And then we scale down the text by 0 0.01 or something like that. We can scale it up immediately after that with the locator itself. So middle mouse button, so I can scale this like this and even move it around on the screen like so. So imagine the print static that I'm using here is printing from the bottom here. So whenever I print something else, it will grow upwards. So it makes sense to position it here at the lower end of the screen, just in case there's more text to be displayed. So this way you can see now we have a static display that always shows me some details about this object on my screen. And whenever I change it, it would update my heads up display. But again, Camera has become part of the construction history or part of this um, Bifrost graph. And whenever I move the camera around, it will of course trigger an update of this here, positioning all of these, uh, all of these characters, all of these trends in uh, the local space of the camera. So let's remove that and have a look at the, the other method by converting the graph into a DAC node so that we have these two BIF objects again. So I take the BIF object of the text of the strands and middle mouse button drag and drop it onto the camera and it becomes invisible because the camera, the parent object is invisible. So I pick the camera and um, make it visible. Here's my text again. And now I'll simply zero out all of the transforms and make the whole thing smaller. Initially just 0 0.01 or something like that and move it in negative Z a little bit like so. So here's the object and now I can scale it up a little bit and move it around in local space. So in the camera. Okay, so now we have this thing in the local space of the camera. It will always be displayed. Remember when you set the, the minus Z translation this has to be minimum the size of the near clipping plane. So if the near clipping plane is set something to like 10 or so, you have to set this to minus 11 to make the thing visible. Otherwise you wouldn't see it. So that's the only obstacle here. But this way the camera is no longer part of the Bifrost graph, will not be slowed down. The only print method that cannot do this thing here with the BIF objects is the print points because all of the points are separate entities and they cannot be separate objects here in the outliner to be oriented towards the camera. Okay, so have fun with it. I'm happy that you use it. And if you have any questions about the print pack or any suggestions, please let me know, send me a mail. Thank you.